dear brothers and sisters. In the book of Acts, the final commissioning of Jesus that Jesus gave to the disciples. You shall be my witnesses, Jesus said, to the ends of the earth, beginning in Jerusalem, spreading to Judea, all the way to Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. A new command, the last command that Jesus gave to the disciples. A command given to every one of us. The Lord is giving us a new meaning for our life. A new purpose for our living. What are we living for? What is the reason for our existence? You and I will live for Jesus. We live to bring the good news of his salvation everywhere around us. We begin in Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the home, hometown, neighborhood, parish. Judea is the province we need to spread. The good news has to spread from mouth to mouth, from family to family, to the neighboring province Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And that means, wherever we are, whatever we must be doing, whomever we are talking to, we should have a mission. By nature, by call, by commission, we are missionaries. Missionary is a person who has a mission. And you and I, we shall know this, that we are people with a mission. We are not just living to vegetate. We are not just living to make money, to make name and fame, to gain authority, to build a big house, to buy a second car, and to become famous, to be appreciated, and applauded by everyone, and then die, and perish in the mud of the earth. No, it's not we are called for. We are called to shine as the apostles in the kingdom of God, as missionaries, as witnesses. Here we live for Jesus. And after this life, we shine as stars. Jesus said, you shall be you shall be with me forever, with Jesus forever. But then our life with Jesus begins right here, right here. In such a beautiful way, I find the reason of my living is Jesus. As a missionary with a mission, with a message to everyone. And Jesus illustrates this. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. What does salt do? Salt gives taste to life, to food. And light, light dispels darkness. There's so much of darkness in the hearts and lives of people. There's so much of darkness in the inner rooms of our families. And life has become tasteless for many. Life has become meaningless for many. Families have become broken, not knowing what I'm living for, what I'm living with my wife, with my husband, with my children for. Nothingness has set in the hearts of many. People go on enjoying life, grabbing all the pleasures of this world, whatever kicks that the flesh can give us, and after some time, they become empty. The flesh does not fill our hearts. The world does not satisfy us. Nothing of this world can bring us everlasting joy and abiding peace, because we are not created for this world. We are created 
to be with the Lord and therefore our challenge is to live for the Lord giving the good news of salvation and we must tell it we must tell it to everyone we must light a lamp everywhere so that men and women may see the light and come to the light and the light is Jesus praise the Lord hallelujah a woman came here for a retreat and she was going back she told me father I'm going back but I'm very sad I asked her what makes you sad she said father I'm doomed to live a sad life because my husband is a drunkard a very irresponsible man he works but all the money he gets he drinks with he does not bring any money home and the children rebel they're very unhappy they're angry with the dad every day there is a quarrel and the neighbors won't come to our house because ours is a cursed family I told her that could be true that's what Satan has done for your family but God has taken over God has taken charge of your life and God is sending you to your family with a message with a mission with a power to save your family to save your children and your husband I told her go and bring your husband and your children for the retreat she said father my husband will never come here for a retreat I told her your husband will come here for a retreat she said father you don't understand what my husband is I told her I understand what your husband is what he mean is there's a lot of darkness in his life but I told her darkness is feeble evil is feeble darkness might look very thick however thick however pitch the darkness is just light a little lamp all the darkness is this part I told her my sister you experience that Jesus is the light of your life take the light take the light that light will dispel all the darkness in your family in your husband in your children she asked me father what shall I do I told her fast and pray that's what Jesus said by fasting evil powers are cast out fast and pray for your husband love him care for him let there be a message of love in your heart for your husband all the time I told her my sister you need to change you should have a mission you should have a message you should have a word in your heart for your husband and go with that word that word never fails the word of God is powerful that light will always dispel darkness that message is the message to save this world go in the power of the Holy Spirit and she went she began to pray she began to fast once a week and that day she spent all the time in prayer for the husband and later she came back to me and she told me her experience she said father I began to fast for my husband I began to pray for my husband the first change that took place was in my heart in my life there could be many wives here who are praying for the husbands first pray for yourself so that you may be changed you may become the salt 
you may become the leaven you may become the light you may become the love you may have the word you may have the power to change your family she said father i felt a change in me earlier when the husband came home drunk i used to resent i used to be angry i would not even go to meet him i would not serve food to him and there was always a quarrel every day but now father he may come drunk he may come abusing i would be very loving towards him because now we understand i have a mission earlier when he shouted when he abused i said to myself who is he to shout at me who is he to abuse me i wanted to give back in the same measure i also would abuse i also would shout but now i know when he shouts i don't shout back he shouts because there is the evil the darkness of anger of sin in him more darkness is not the answer to dispel darkness more anger is not the answer to dispel anger now light and love i began to serve him I began to be kind to him I began to be good to him and i saw a surprise in my husband all the time she said after three months of fasting of praying of loving one day in the morning all the drunkards are very good in a good mood in the morning in the morning i sat with my husband i gave him a cup of tea a very special thai tea i made on that day for my husband she said i put a lot of sugar and a lot of love into that tea i gave that tea to my husband and and i told him you know everybody is going for a retreat why don't we also go for a retreat the husband heard it thought for a moment and then he said you know i have been thinking about it for some time let's go for a retreat next week itself praise the lord hallelujah 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 light was enlightening love was changing salt was making that family their life beautiful tasty meaningful the whole family came here for the retreat and they went back they have become a light in the neighborhood in that parish praise the lord hallelujah 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 my dear sisters and brothers stop cursing darkness stop blaming darkness stop finding fault with others it does not help wherever you curse wherever you find fault there is the satan behind it satan trying to apply more darkness to darkness let's not be filled with darkness let us be filled with light with love with power we are not helpless in the presence of darkness we are not helpless before evil we have the power we have the light we have the word to change the whole world we need to get that confidence in our hearts we need to have the confidence to become missionaries to become lights to the ends of the earth witnesses jesus said you shall be my witnesses who is a witness a witness is a person who has experienced first hand in the court of law the judge would ask you did you see that and you are the witness you tell the judge or oh, sir i did not see that but someone told me i read in the newspaper 
immediately the judge will dismiss you. You're of no good. You're of no good at all. A witness is a person who has seen, who has heard, who has tasted, as St. John said, the first letter of John chapter 1, verses 1 to 4, the word appeared. We have seen him, we have heard him, we have tasted him, we have been one with him, we have had communion with him, we are happy, we are happy, and we share our happiness with you, the good news with you, that your happiness, our happiness may be full. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My dear sisters and brothers, are we happy men and women? If there is sin, there's no happiness. If you are a slave of evil, you have no happiness. You're doomed, you're bound to end up in disaster. A man, a woman, united with Jesus, has happiness in him, happiness in her. And therefore, we need to experience Jesus at every moment in our hearts, to experience him in our hearts. So Jesus said, I'm the vine. You're the branches. You abide in me. I will abide in you. You keep close to me. I will keep close to you. You be one with me. I shall be one with you. Well, a beautiful offer that Jesus is giving us today. To be one with Jesus. To live united with Jesus. In the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the light. In the power of the Holy Spirit. That's our life. That's what we are called for. To be one with Jesus. How do we live one with Jesus? We live one with Jesus in prayer. In prayer, we experience His presence. Wherever we are. Wherever we are. In prayer, we feel God is there close to me. I could be sad. And there is something going bad and sad all the time. But what do we do when something goes wrong? We rush to your neighbor and knock at the door, ring the doorbell, and the lady comes out and you tell her, you know, my husband is very bad. You know what he did yesterday? Oh, really terrible. You share your sadness with your neighbor about your husband, your aunt, and you tell her, my husband is very bad. And the neighbor hears it. She also begins to shed tears. Oh, your husband is bad. You know, what my husband did to me day before yesterday, oh, terrible, terrible. He's a, he's a very bad man. And the two wives come to a conclusion, all the husbands are bad. Is that a consolation? And the next day, this woman goes and tells her neighbor, you know, the husband of that woman is very bad. And the news spreads. A bad news spreads everywhere. A wrong way to face the problems of life. A wrong way to solve the troubles of life. What's needed is to take all our suffering, all our pain, everything sick and sad and bad in our lives, we bring to Jesus in prayer. We offer it all to Him. Offer it all to Him. And that's why St. Paul is telling us, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 onwards, pray constantly. Pray constantly. Jesus himself said, Luke 18, 1, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. The one thing that Jesus wants of us is to be always praying. What does it mean to be always praying? Does it mean 
we should be reciting prayers all the time that we cannot that we shall not we are responsible people if you are a doctor you have much to do if you are an engineer if you are a teacher if you are a housewife we have responsibilities to carry out we need to be don't make prayer an escapism from responsibilities and yet and yet whatever we do wherever we are whoever we are talking to we should raise our hearts and our minds to god every now and then every now and then raise our heart to god in prayer i have a friend a football player he tells me whenever he goes for important matches he takes his girlfriend with him i asked him what's your girlfriend doing in the football field or oh, no father she would be on the gallery i would know where she sits and every now and then i would look at her and she would look at me i would smile and she would smile i would wink and she would wink and all her love would flow into my heart from my heart all that love would flow into my food and then the kick would be very strong praise lord hallelujah now this young man is not looking at the girlfriend all the time is she no no he is actively engaged in the game in the field and yet every now and then a look a smile a wink that reminds him of the presence of the love of his friend and he says father i'm never tired of the game however long i play i'm never tired you know we are people who are tired are we we are very tired we are very tired as a husband as a wife as a teacher we are very tired you know why we are tired we are tired because we are workers we are working who am i working for everything we do should be an act of love act of love for my jesus my friend the friend who died for me the friend who lives with me a friend who is the who becomes food for me a friend who turns everything to my good a friend who is always there by my side who never leaves me alone my jesus my jesus i live for him as he died and rose again for me it's the thing that i live that experience of oneness with the lord that experience of total commitment to him every decision i make i make in the light of his word everything i do i do in the power of the holy spirit i know who i am living for whatever i am doing i could be a doctor prescribing the medicine but i know i am sitting there for 5 hours 6 hours 8 hours 10 hours sitting there looking at patients but really i can feel the presence of my jesus with me i could be a farmer in the field working i could be a teacher i could be a student every now and then i raise my heart to my god i tell my god my god i'm writing i'm teaching i'm cooking but lord i do it all for you for you i live for my jesus jesus becomes the center of my life jesus becomes the joy of my heart i can feel him i should be able to feel him but the brothers and sisters we are tired because we are not loving we do not know how to love we do not know how to do everything in love as an act of love a lover is never tired and we are invited to be lovers united with jesus remember jesus said as the father has loved me 
So have I loved you. Remain in my love. Again through prophet Jeremiah, God said, I have loved you with an everlasting love. My brother, my sister, make your love, make your life a response, a continuous, a constant response to the love of God. And so, I am one with my Jesus. Whatever I do, wherever I go, I can feel Him in my heart. And that is the light in us, Jesus. Remember St. Paul said, Jesus Christ dwells in your heart. Jesus Christ dwells in my heart. And He loves me so much. My God dwells within me. I, I live for Him. I live because I love Him. This is the beauty of our living.